This is day six of the August 2005 seven day retreat in spring water. Sorry about the <coughs> delay. <coughs> that hot is it? Oh. <laughs> Just a little bit. question about truth. Either is there a truth at all? And if so, what is it? And we had several questions come up in the course of time, years. Are there many truths? Or everybody has a little bit of the truth? And another question would be, are we talking about the truth of a statement, like the air conditioner is working? I don't know whether it's true right now. It may already not be true anymore. But it's raining, at least here. Maybe true, maybe not true. So there we can uh, argue and we can measure. We can go outside and see whether we get wet. So either we could ask about the content of a statement. Is that true? Is it true the air conditioner is not working? And we'll hold our hand right in front of it. The other question is, how do we know a truth? And not about the air conditioner, whether it's on or not. We know it if we hold our hand in front of it. But human beings have argued about the truth for millennia, as long as there has been intercommunication. Every group, tribe, nation, family, member of the family, think they have the truth and the other person is wrong. And I think we could dispense with this question if we say, as long as there is an ego point of view, meaning my opinion, my conditioning, my learned knowledge, there will be strife, there will be argument, because mine is different from yours, I was brought up differently, different country, different language, different civilization. We cannot come to an agreement we can come to an agreement that we have different backgrounds. That is true. But what these different backgrounds do to our perception uh, cannot be argued away. To say my, my perception is better than yours because so, 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 and that, and that, and that, and that. So, who, who of us can claim that they are free of conditioning, free of training, of education. Of belief systems that have been inculcated into one, one doesn't even realize it, isn't even aware of it. And even if we're aware 
of our conditioning is it possible to be free of it? To be totally free of it? Maybe a little bit free here and there? There may have been a few human beings who have been free of conditioning. I don't know. I cannot say whether this is a true statement or not. But as long as there is any kind of in indoctrination that has taken place, the brain has been conditioned, has conditioned itself by its impressions and its ways of functioning which has evolved over time. There will be differences of opinion, of perceptions, of beliefs and ideas. Is that true? See, we can ask whether that statement is true. Maybe we could argue over that one again. But I think it's pretty solid that we cannot see what is true if we are in any way conditioned. Then our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, mind, they all perceive differently from each other. Not just due to different cultures, but also within each culture, different perceptions, different upbringings likes and dislikes. It is so. If we want to discuss it in the afternoon, we can. Or would it be a waste of time? I don't know. We could try. But there can be a lightening of our convictions, at least that my convictions must be correct and our and, and realizing how we defend what we believe in. Defend it so strongly as though it was a physical attack when my beliefs or opinions are maligned, put down, or just negated by someone. We feel hurt. It, it seems so amazing if you think about it with a clear mind. And the mind can be that clear that it realizes it cannot be clear. Could we spare ourselves a lot of bloodshed, a lot of disharmony by understanding this truth that we cannot agree as long as we are conditioned, except agree that we are conditioned. That's something already. People have brought it up. Last night somebody said, what if children, teenagers, uh, were to start meditation, meditating and clearing their minds? Wouldn't that be a betterment of the world? Well, we have some teenagers here. Ask them. <laughs> and what is the betterment of the world? Uh, that is, again, your idea conditioned by your wishes, convictions, beliefs. You see how entangled it all is. Amazing. Isn't there something that goes through the mind and I, I don't know it very much by heart. You probably have all learned it just like we learned things in Germany. These truths we consider to be self-evident also, isn't there? 
some uh, hmm? in this country? Yes, the declaration. And what the declaration? declaration? Yeah. And how, how does it go? These truths we hold to be self-evident. And what are they? All men are created. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, we can't get beyond that first thing, can we? <laughs> this is just credo. And it says these truths, right? Not these beliefs. Hmm? Yes. Endowed with some inalienable rights. What did you say? Endowed with unalienable rights. It goes on. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> See what we what we're made to believe to be true. It is amazing. And we do, and then we go to war over it. <laughs> there are truths about that too, you shall not kill. Well, let's not get into this. It's the, the, the beauty of meditation, of sitting, is to simplify, to let, this, let the life simplify itself, which it will if we understand a little bit the mechanisms of thinking, the defense of thinking, and then the question, does it have to be that way? Do we have to defend our thoughts, our beliefs? But then we first have to understand and recognize and admit that these are beliefs, that they are not eternal truths. And when eternal and God comes in, then there is trouble isn't there. So, why did I bring this up? Well, somebody asked about truth. Uh, what is true? And I knew why I, did, why I didn't want to get into this. So we have to really uh, limit this question or agree on a small question. This is too large. We cannot comprehend it, meaning put our arms around it. These arms, these mortal arms, don't stretch far enough. And I forgot my little slip. What are we going to talk about? Something occurred to me while I was sitting in the chair. The sentence flashed through the mind, because it's a poor way of expressing it. A sentence revealed itself. Or what flashes? What is the mind? It's a bunch of thoughts, remembrances. But at any rate, the sentence was, Awareness is not knowing. Does that make sense? At the moment I thought, this is good. Awareness is not knowing. I wonder whether we could all agree on that. A 
if we agree on what not knowing is. Not knowing, is that the same as awareing, seeing? The very first little booklet that I wrote was called Seeing Without Knowing. fought over that, that this is impossible. Impossible that you see something and don't know it or don't want to know it. Well, it's a different thing that you want to know it. But today this is not a topic of argument anymore, that this is impossible. Because people over the years, 10, 20 years, have realized, many of us, that there can be indeed a seeing without knowing, which is what we also call a wearing. And so this sentence, a wearing or awareness is not knowing, does that help out those people who don't know what, what, what not knowing is? Or is just just another complication, another conundrum? Some people say, I don't know what you mean by not knowing. Do you know what is meant by awareing, awareness, presence, the cool air, the voice, lack of saliva, so the voice is a very strong. The feed, feeling on the skin, coolness, some knowing in there, but we know that when the air conditioner is off for an hour, it'll be hot on the skin. Not just hot, but it'll be moist. We know that. But if we sit there with sweat covering our body, th it doesn't need to be known in any kind of scientific way what it is that the sweat glands are doing. It is just being, being wet. Is there a difference between that two, awareing and being? Observing and being. I observe something that can very easily bring a duality as me and there's what I'm observing, a person. He or she looks very friendly at me or very angry. And knowing, I remember, she's always angry. It's her, it's her personality. Well, you could say this proves my, seeing her now proves my knowing. But to, to step out of the house, do it in the house too, but it's always particularly disarming, amazing to step out of the house, out of the four walls and the ceiling and floor into the open air, the fragrances, the way the skin feels under sunshine or rain, awareing it all. We don't have to know it. Knowing is finding explanations, descriptions. But being that is wet being wet. It can't, that need not be explained. Actually, it cannot be explained. Often people say that I cannot find the words for this. It is too hard to explain, but it is not hard to be angry or disturbed, happy. It is okay, but that we, we do it all the time. We are.
off when a storm is coming, the sky is, the sky is getting dark, thunder. Some, somebody may ask, what's the, weather, what's the weather forecast saying? And while you, all you need to do is look out of the window, it may already have started to rain, but we want to know, we want to have confirmation because we feel more at ease in knowing than in being. We don't trust that. Or do we? There's one minute left for my medication. <laughs> Good sense of time. If you will excuse me, I will take it. The day I had some some Tylenol was it and it was red. I thought that's a new one, red Tylenol, but it was like Easter eggs, like a jelly bean, sugary with the flavor. Was that ever nice to take? <laughs> Much easier to swallow. There's a song from Sound of Music, isn't there? Spoonful of sugar. I should put that here. Not the song, but the spoonful of sugar. So I still don't know what to talk about. Do you have anything that you would like me to, to say? Because we, well, it's 11 or 8, or we started so late. Because of the Talk of the truth of this moment, the open natural state. What is that? Yes, the open natural state. The truth of this moment is the open natural state you're saying, or you're asking whether that is equal. Yeah, but you, you thought in the related yesterday an experience uh, of an open natural state, at least what you thought was an open natural state, but how do I know that this is true? No, I'm asking you <laughs> to tell us now about the open natural, natural state, state is would be for me right now to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Lie in bed, close the eyes and off I go. Whether it's natural, it's not quite natural because I take medication which is makes me sleep sleepy. But the open See, is, is our openness that we talk about here, is that natural? We like to think so and we like to say so. Is it because there is no effort made to be open? That may be one criterion. There's no effort, it's just what it is. There's the humming of the air conditioner and the cooling of the skin said it before, but it's still so. And there is no inhibition, no feeling of good or bad, good people on the right, bad people on the left, red states and blue states. That, that, that is not known. 
right and wrong are false categories. They only exist in thought. They're not true, open, and natural, are they? Now, do you want me to relate in experience? No, I, I, I won't do that. I don't relate experiences very often, except when the mouth is so dry that I have to give some, feel I have to give some explanation. And a thought arises. Will people now think she better start retiring? And this thought arose. Will somebody say you better cut down retreats? Let somebody else do the work? And I wouldn't like that. This dislike of that uh, anticipation of this like came with this thought because actually talking being with you and letting come what will that, that is my lifeline that is my life to be in touch with the open natural state and to let that flow whether the medication interferes with that, it hasn't until now. This is the first time this has happened. And I hope maybe the last time. But it may happen again. Of course it will. We all age. We all get sick. Not all. Some people get to be 124 years old. I don't know what shape they're in. <laughs> Well, I'm not so far from that. <laughs> but is there an open, natural state? Uh, how do you know? That person may think so, may feel so. I don't know whether you saw the uh, television series. What was that? This Jewish man my talks with Tuesdays with Maury. Do you know that? You should see that. A man who had, um, oh, you know it, don't you? Um, Lou Gehrig's disease, yes. And one of our anchors made friends with him and asked him if he could take pictures, a television uh, videos of him. And he agreed in a very, very moving. very moving uh, series. He was a sociology professor, and a lot of insights, and it's just beautiful to behold, which now reminds me of some other characteristic of the open, natural state, in that the senses are not divided. There isn't either I hear or I see or I feel, touch. It is one whole perception. There is not a division in our perception. Have you ever felt that? That there is just, it's all there simultaneously, not divided. And I think when I said it the first time again, there were people who said it's impossible. I can either only hear or I can only see. I can't do both with, with, concent with a concentrated mind, whatever mind is. But uh, a, a Japanese um, Zen master, Hakuin was his name, he, he described when that happened as an explosion coming together or they getting one of all the senses and the Buddhists call thinking as one of the senses which is a very intelligent way of looking at thinking it is a sense so 
no division. If there is a division, watch it, experiment with it. Then, there's, then there are words, then there are words to say, I hear this and I see that, and the words that separate the senses. But without words, there is no separation. That, that is the open natural state. Sensing, <coughs> perceiving without separation. And to say, that's impossible, that can't be, that is just overemphasis of the thinking sensation. <laughs> because it's not true. Is it? You could argue with me. And I wouldn't argue back. Because either it is being experienced or it is not. Can you? Hear and see and taste all simultaneously? Or would you say, look, I have experimented with it, but I have to say, I have to name these things in order to keep them. No, it is when I name these things that they keep separate. When I don't name them, when I don't know, then they're together. So this is again the wholeness of perception is awareness. But it's not knowing. That's how we started out. Awaring is not knowing. And awaring, again, is the wholeness of all the senses, working together as one. And no feeling of separation or loneliness, abandonment. These are all overemphasis of one or other senses, which we make ourselves believe because we say it. It, it should be interesting in, in going to a retreat when you don't speak, although we do speak quite a bit in these groups. It's an hour and then another hour or so, no, not even in private meetings. But is the not talking, not speaking, not labeling, not describing, does that aid in a feeling of wholeness, openness? Does it? Well, it probably doesn't happen that you don't speak, or does it? It's very difficult because we do internally speak, we monologue or dialogue incessantly, almost, don't we? Or is it possible to come to a state where there's very little monologuing or dialoguing quietly in one's mind? Just listening to the fan blowing. And there's no need to say the fan is blowing. Do you say that? Or is there a word process going on while you're quiet? Is there? Are you trying it out? Or are you where I was a minute ago, almost asleep? It's actually an amazing state that I'm experiencing uh, quite frequently, being awake and yet asleep. Well, it's the human condition, isn't it? We're, we think we are awake, but we're asleep. That's a little bit different. Asleepness, it means ignorant of what we are who we are, what we are, and the falseness, falseness of belief that we're separate beings. Do you believe that? That you're separate? 
from all these other people here? I don't mean that we're all glued together, <laughs> like spring water twins or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but would, what would 48 people be called? Twin, no, twins, but you know what I mean, you were laughing. All grown together. Clones. 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 Siamese 48. Siamese 48. But we're in spring water, we're not in Siam. <laughs> have you have you learned in these few days, or as long as you have been coming to retreat, that could be years, decades, have you learned to enjoy being quiet? And with that, at times, motionless? Or is it a chore? something you, you wish would end. It's too strenuous. How is it? Maybe that would be something to ask of people, whether you have awakened to that, that taste of silence. And with that, the taste of not knowing. And with that, the taste of awaring without knowing. I think we better stop here for today. <laughs> <laughs>